we are going to switch to the next speaker or speakers uh, rather. So uh, Bruno Sousa, since 1995, Bruno helps Java developers improve their careers and work on cool projects with great people. Java evangelist and Java champion Bruno is founder and president of So Java, the Brazilian Java User Society. He also represents a group of JCP Executive Committee. Bruno discusses Java and the developer career in Code 4.life project. So please welcome Bruno. And uh, if I understand correctly, Bruno, are you presenting today uh, yourself or you have a co-presenter? So, hey, Yuri, how you doing, man? So good to, have to be here with you. Amazing that I'm back here at DevOps Ukraine, right? You guys run such an amazing event. Thanks so much. Uh, you know, can you hear me well? Is all good? Yes, it's looking great. And we also can can see your uh, whiteboard, right? So I, I assume there's going to be like good old times whiteboarding session with a physical whiteboard for a change, right? Why not, That's... right? You know? <laughs> uh, so, so, yes, I do have a co-presenter uh, today, right? So if you guys can bring him in. Uh, Silvio de Moraes is a good friend. You know, he's a top consultant uh, in the U.S. He's been working as a consultant for the last 30 years in the U.S. Uh, he's extreme experience working for some of the largest uh, banks and financial institutions in the world. And uh, he's been, for the last year, he's been, he's been testing all kinds of artificial intelligence uh, projects uh, and, you know, how to use artificial intelligence to improve your coding and, and you know, improve your productivity and especially how to do consultative that, right? So I'd like to bring him in. Uh, uh, amazing so oh we ha we can ha we can all three be together at the same time i was going to say that's well you guys can bring me out of the presentation to save space on the screen but okay so we're all on the screen at the same time hello silvia how are you doing hi Yuri. hi everyone uh very good and actually great to be here uh this this is a phenomenal event and uh, thank you all and thank you bruno for inviting me i'm very happy to, to be here today sharing this uh there's things that I have found out and we all need to, to learn about AI and how they can help us go better. Definitely. And this conversation, they pretty much started from the very first days of uh, this chat GPT boom, where people were asking questions, will developers be at all needed in two years or in five years, right? But in your presentation, you are going to bring in the argument to the opposite way, right? So if uh, AI is bringing new opportunities for the developers, will that be the idea? Or we will take the, the job of the AI and uh, make sure that it doesn't have job anymore? <laughs> you know, I think that I think it's going to be a combination of all of that, right? But we're still going to have lots of amazing jobs. Uh, you know, there's I don't I don't see a problem uh, at all, right? And I know lots of people are worried about it. But uh, really, I don't see any issue. Uh, I'm, I'm securing the backup job in cinematography just, just to make sure. I mean, we, we, we need sure, it. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's have a backup yeah. plan, right? Yes. We are, we are going to be able to do social media at least, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's perfect. Uh, yeah, uh, well, um, and at, at least it's also kind of, uh, at least as entertaining. So without further ado, guys, the stage is all yours. So whenever you're ready, please share the, um, it's not going to be the slide. So please share the whiteboard and uh, uh, yes, we will follow up and uh, come back. I'll come back for the Q&A session. Sure. Thanks a lot, Yuri. That's great, right? And Thank you. So, uh, so guys, for everyone that's watching us here, right? So, you know, I'm here on the chat. I'd love to hear you saying something in the chat, just to know that you guys can hear us, can see us. I see, uh, you know, uh, Irina, Irina is, is, is there. So hey, Irina, how are you doing? Oleg is there, how, how Oleg? So I want you guys to just kind of, because what we want to do here, me and Silvia, is that we want to help you uh, by answering all the questions, right? Everything that's going on uh, with your career right now. And of course, we will uh, discuss, um, uh, you know, uh, artificial intelligence, right? But we also discuss artificial intelligence in terms of your career, right? Uh, Oleg says, there's a nice phrase I heard today, AI do not replace us, but people using AI will do. That's a great phrase, Oleg, right there, right? So, and, I, and I think that uh, we, can we can definitely do this. We can have to discuss uh, exactly that, right? So, yeah, come on, guys. Say, say hello to the chat, right? Let me see if I can see the chat, right? I saw Oleg and Irina, right? But I'm not sure if I'm in the right place, if I can see it, right? So come on, 
tell me, tell me, tell me in the chat. So jury, hey, hello, jury. That's so good, man. All right, so that's so we see some people in the chats. That's awesome. And so what I want to do right now, you know, uh, and I see the Seals already has his screen share right there, right? Uh, um, so we're gonna start immediately with the screen share. See, we want to have some discussion first. Uh, uh, no, no, let's have some discussion first. So just, just to have something uh, on on the background here. All right. Good. Okay, guys. If, if you, if, if there is, I'm not sure if there is a way. If there is a way for put me and Super for a little bit, and then we bring the there a little later, that would be good too. Uh, but that's okay. So, we hear, right? I, you know, I, we hear a lot of this idea about artificial intelligence, right? And and how artificial intelligence is gonna impact our career and all of that. So one thing that I like to do, Silver, is to compare. You know, Yuri was just talking about that he is a videographer, right? So when we look about different careers, guys, different areas, and we see, for example, let's just imagine that you are doing a marketing activity, for example, right? And uh, and you are, uh, for example, you want to build a like a landing page, right? Like a sales page. Let's say it's like a sales page or a sales email, and you know nothing about it, right? And so you just go to ChatGPT, and maybe you ask ChatGPT, you know, something like, you know, maybe maybe you could do that, Silvio. Just say ChatGPT, I want to sell this amazing product, right? You know, the JCP. 25 years product, right? And and what I want to do is I want to I want you to put together for me a sales page, right? To sell this amazing product, uh, the JCP 25 years. Um, you know, let's see. Does ChatGPT is able to create a sales page for me? What do you think, Silvio? Oh, let's see. Let's ask it. But the the, yeah, so, the, the thing is, right? Whatever whatever happens now after. I, I asked this. It will be a, a a a very raw idea, right? And and this is this is a, a thing about this this whole uh, this whole uh, generation AI thing, right? It's 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 yeah. it will come up with something that looks good enough at the first read, but then as soon as you start going deep you see that it's too shallow it doesn't have enough uh you know creativity to actually make uh make a compelling argument why you should in this case buy the gcp you see a lot of stuff right it comes it's coming up with features and, and testimonials and ideas of how to do it, it's a good skeleton but it's a very standard uh template right something that you'll see everywhere so that's the point, right? Yeah. It needs the human aspect to be, make it unique. Right. So one, one thing, Silvio, uh, first of all, maybe you could zoom in uh, the, 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 so, so we can actually see it, right? Maybe just kind of get the, 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 the word sheet to, to show. Yeah, it's exactly much better. Right? So we can actually see a little bit, right? Uh, so here's the, here's the thing, guys. We ask, you know, if we ask anything to ChatGPT or to any one of AIs, right? And, you know, I do have... Some AIs are very focused on specific things that I use. Um, you ask them anything, and it will create you something, right? But if you know nothing about marketing and you try to look at that page, and it might even be a good page, you might look at it and say, "Man, that sounds interesting. That sounds nice." But the problem is, it might not be the right strategy. For example, right? It might not be the right way to sell the product. It might not be the best arguments uh to sell the product right you know the ai does not understand your audience maybe it might put a put a a, a, a say a sales page that's very very good for you know the type of audience that you don't have right you know for the type of audience that you don't want to have for example you know uh and so the ai can provide you something now what happens if you get that something right there and you put online right so oh that's going to be my great sales page and then you start sending people to that sales page so you can sell something in it. You might never have any results or worst, you might have a little bit of results and you think, man, this is great, it's really working. But you don't know because it, you don't have the right strategy because you don't understand marketing. You don't have the right message because you don't understand marketing. You don't have the right audience because you don't understand marketing. 
right? So what the AI is going to do, and I see, I'm, I'm telling about these guys because I see this being done over and over and over again. People trying to just come up with, you know, a blog article or a, a, a sales page or a testimonial page, all of these, just kind of typing something on, on, on ChatGPT. And it comes out with something that might be better than the person would have done, but it's not the right something, right? So when we see this in a different context, like smart that we're talking about here, we can see that, right? We can look at the page and say, hmm, that sounds a little off, right? That sounds a little weird. Now, uh, uh, but we don't know enough about marketing to really know what's going on. But how about software development? When we, do the, we try to do the same thing with software, then what happens is if you, if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get the same thing. You're going to get a bad piece of code, something that doesn't solve the problem, something that doesn't understand really the context, what, what's going on, something that does not really get clarity on, you know, on, on what needs to be done, right? You know, it can really do something, but that something is going to be a little off, it's going to be a little weird, and worst of all, it might not bring you the right result that you want. And it doubt you understanding what is the result you want, what is, what is the thing that you want that you want to happen, then there's no way for it to validate, right? Actually, in the sales page, there's even a clear result, right? Because we know if it's not selling, it's a bad sales page, right? So there is a clear result. But how about, for example, a security mechanism, right? That you don't know if it's really working until someone is able to, to compromise it, right? Or, you know, what, what do you do something in terms of performance, right? You know, maybe, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're not so clear about how much performance you, 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 you can have, right? Uh, or, you know, or something that makes easier for people to come and use your products or something appealing for people to come and use your product that you don't have a clear way to measure. So you can't just rely on AI to just kind of come and decide to do those things especially because no matter how we try, right? AI does not understand all this context that we're talking about. Is that right, Silvio? What do you think about all this? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Especially when we talk about software and, and going back to the first uh, uh, sentence you said, right? That uh, developers are not being replaced by AI is precisely because of that, right? We, we are a fundamental in the software designing process and software building process right now and for the foreseeable future because we understand context, because we can really go into a, a, a business situation, look at that business problem and come up with a software solution to that problem, right? This AI can help us a lot building this, you know, uh, 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 building pieces of it, very specific pieces that you as a as a developer, as a, as a person that really understands how, how things are done, you can create the context. You have to create the context. Be explicit. Be, be capable of uh, uh, ask the right question, right? It, it, people are calling this prompt engineering and such, but it's, it's actually uh, just another form of software development, right? Um, if, we, if we think back, uh, you know, back in the uh, early 1980s, right? When the whole microcomputer was, was happening in the, the business, in the, the, the office, people were saying, okay, this will be the end of the developers, the end of the programmers back then, right? Because now people will have computers in their office and they don't, they don't need more, you know, big mainframes and, and many programmers to, to write software for those, those big machines. What happened? We end up with even more developers, even more programmers. Then, you know, few, 20 or so years later, we have the internet and say, okay, people now have this, these guys over there writing this, this web pages and we don't need software developers on our companies anymore. Every, everything will be some software in the, uh, in the, the, some web page somewhere. And what happens is that we get even more developers to help us. The, the, the market for software engineering just exploded. Now we have apparently more than 10 million uh, Java developers in the world, and that's only in Java. So 
What's going to happen with AI? Well, probably we'll need more developers, at least in the near future, right? 10 years from now, who can even think about? But right now, I would not be uh, afraid of losing my job to AI. But you should be maybe afraid of losing your job to someone, someone else, some other developer that knows how to use AI, how to correctly ask the questions to get the best code out of it. Okay, awesome. So now, one thing that I want to do before we, we actually go show a little bit, right? So I want to I want to talk to the guys uh, in the chat, right? And you know, what what has been your experience, right? When when you think about AI, what are you worried about, right? You know, in terms of your career, where do you want to get in your career that you think AI is going to help you or is going to hinder you, right? So tell us a little bit in the chat. What is your biggest worry that you have about your career in general? But you know, you can you can do more specific about AI if you want to. But we really want to do, we really want to use AI to help you achieve what you want. So. I'm going to add, so here's the two things I want you to write in the chat. One, what is your biggest dream that you have, right? In terms of career, where do you want to get? Do you want to get, uh, you know, do you want to be an amazing speaker? Do you want to get a larger salary? Do you want to change on a country? Do you want to, uh, you know, to, to, to join, to work for another, another company? Uh, what is, do you want to be an awesome developer? I mean, what is your biggest dream that you have in your career right now? Right? And the second thing I want you to, to say is, okay, from this dream, what's your biggest challenge that you have, right? So write to us in the chat, because the idea that we want to have here is that we want to help, we're going to use AI to help you achieve your dream, right? So tell us in the chat, what is your biggest dream that you have? And so, uh, um, so Silvio, one of the things that, that uh, I think that's lots of people were worried about, right? And, and I think that's... Uh, um, I'm just going to use Oleg's phrase that he put here earlier. He says, AI will not replace us, right? But people using AI will. So I want to talk about a little situation that happened on, on online uh, uh, some time ago, just so you uh, and may, maybe can comment on that too. And so there was this, this, this guy that did a test, right? He got a, what he said, a newbie developer, right? Um, that to, 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 to write a software for a startup. And then he got an experienced developer with many years of experience to do the same thing, to write the software in the startup, right? So, uh, so the newbie went on to use all kinds of tools, AI and, you know, cloud tools, everything to develop the application. And the senior developer just decided to do everything by hand, right? To just go and program everything. And so after one week, the newbie developer had uh you know like just like 70 percent of the thing done with tests right and working and running and the experience developer had you know less than 10 percent of everything done and you know uh, counting how much the guy was costing right you know the the, the senior the, the the more experienced developer would cost a huge amount of money and a huge amount of time to have the thing done while the newbie developer would have done everything much faster right so that was that was you know the, the discussion and i i don't have the link right here with me but you know that was a discussion and maybe you guys can can go look at that and and from the outside Silvio, it looks like yeah you know so the newbie developer can just come in and and do a much better work uh uh than than the senior developer right i'm not sure you want to comment or you want me to comment on first but no no go ahead but i have definitely my ideas on that particular case for sure all right, so so here, after looking at the case, right? So a lot of people are saying, yeah, you know, uh, it's you know AI is going to replace or it's going to make, make it, uh, uh, you know, developers be uh, way more uh, productive, and so the new the new guys are just going to come in and do and do everything or something like this. But in reality, here's what I thought about when I read that and I saw that this is I wasn't part of this project, right? So I wasn't part of the experiment. I was just reading what the guy was writing about. So for me. There's a couple of things that, that stand out, right? So first of all, the newbie developer. He was not so newbie, right? So he had worked with, with the high guy uh, uh, in, in the past, right? He knew the guy was competent. So first of all, we're talking about two professional com competent developers, right? So 
it's it's not something it's not like someone that does not know what he's doing just comes in and and use ai to do amazing things that's not the case right so just just the fact the fact the guy called newbie he was not he was he was you know for me from his description of what the guy did he was a professional probably a senior developer already right but with less experience than the other one i i you know that's 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 a true thing uh so you know ai for me clearly will be able to uh help you that you are a professional experienced developer to be more productive i have no doubt about that right that's that's something that Steve is going to show us in practice right now in a few minutes right uh the second thing that caught my attention was it was a startup right and so so the reason the experienced developer uses it to write everything by hand with all good reasons right he said things like you know uh i don't want to be tied to a cloud provider you know i want to be i run write a maintainable code that's you know that 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 costs less to run you know i want to be uh very specific for the long run so his reasons were reasonable right and you know just kind of using all kinds of cloud tools and cloud systems and cloud apis out of the bat you know in terms of uh running application longer right so for example we we saw a few years ago right dropbox actually building their own data center instead of just providing the cloud right because you know this made sense for them for example right so so i thought the reasons for the for the for the senior developer were very good but not for the problem at hand you know it was a startup that needs to put something really quick really uh, fast on on the air it writes you know it's more important for a startup to actually get something up and running get new customers get investors than to think on the long run right so so my opinion on this is that it had nothing to do with ai right you know you get a, a very experienced developer that's more worried about his own work and how good he write codes than to solve the real problem because the real problem was not just to create code right the real problem was to get a startup up and running really fast so for me the more you know the the, the last senior developer let's say right the last senior developer was way more experienced by listening what he had to do in listening the context understanding what the customer needs and applying the right tools to the job and when you apply the right tools to the job doesn't matter if ai if it's cloud if it's devops if it's security when you apply the right tools to the job it's no doubt man that you're going to be way more productive than the person that applies the wrong tools to the job right and so uh, uh so for me that was uh that's the way that's the way i saw uh the problem so how about you Steve? did you see something similar to that uh, yes, uh, in, in some ways I do, but I, I also see uh, uh, two things that are uh, interesting about this case, right? First of all, uh, the, the, the fact that it happened at a startup is fundamental, right? I've been working with uh, uh, only very large corporations. I haven't worked in a, in a startup, never. Uh, and that type of uh, situation would not fly at all uh, on, on any any client that I had for the last at least 25 years, right? The whole aspects of security of, uh, you know, um, even uh, for, for instance, I'm positive that AI did not create a way to manage uh, uh, certificates, for example, just uh, some, some very basic stuff like that. So it's, it's very probable that uh, the, the, the type of result that was created by the, the, the AI, uh, let's say alone, uh, assuming minimal input from the, the developer is it's not good enough for enterprise level but putting that aside right the fact that the comparison was made by a senior developer that is uh kind of an anti-ai and a junior developer that is uh, someone that likes ai and use ai is incomplete right what's missing there is the experienced developer that embraces ai and that is the thing that we all here need to become Right, you need to become that one, the one that understands code and that uh, under, understands the software development process, understands business, and wants to understand AI 
and bring everything together. Now, just to give a personal, uh, uh, you know, data point here, this, ju this just happened, you know, with me earlier uh, this year. I, I have been an architect for the last 15, 18 years or so, but uh, because of AI, because of I wanted to test this thing, I got a, a contract as a, as a senior developer because I wanted to really code this thing, right? And see how that, uh, that tool would improve my coding skills. And again, I have to say that I haven't put any coding in production for, for you know, several years. I was designing a lot of things, but I wasn't actually coding uh, the actual code that goes into production. And I was able to, by myself, I had only me and a, 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 a people on, on the, the DevOps side. And I was the only one generating code, only one interacting with the, the, the code base at all in, in, in the API sets and whatnot. And I went from, I have nothing to, I am ready to go to production in 44, 45 days, right? One single person. It wasn't a big thing. It was uh, maybe 4,000 lines of uh, Go code and maybe two more, 2,000 uh, lines of uh, test case. So it was a 6,000 lines uh, code base altogether. <coughs> but it's, it's a lot of code for, you know, a little over a month for one single person. And yes, uh, AI helped a lot, especially on uh, the test cases. The test cases are almost 100% AI. And, and we'll talk about that soon enough because I think that's the, right now, that's the, the best place to go for, for really big gains on that. But uh, it really is a multiplier, right? It, you become that famous 2x developer, 3x developer, 5x developer, right? Because you have this very, you know, fast junior developer working with you. Right? It becomes a situation where you are pair programming with someone that knows the languages very well, doesn't understand anything else, but if you guide the, the dialogue, you get great results out of it. So that's what we, we see, that's what's missing, right? The, 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 the comparison is just incomplete. It's not wrong, it's just incomplete. We need the, the, the real game changer is an experienced developer with AI tools. And then, then you get the, uh, the big multiplier there. Then you become a really uh, uh, someone that really impacts the, the corporation that you are working for, the team that you are working at and, and whatnot. Right. So one, one question that comes from this that I think is important for us to, to address is, okay, so then if you have an experienced developer that embrace AI and then AI, you know, you're treating AI as this junior developer, you can send like, you know, do the test for me. And, and we're going to show how to how that works in a minute. But you know, you can you can treat AI as the junior developer that helps you out, right? And so, does that put the junior developer in a situation that he's never going to be able to find a job because AI is going to take the job of the junior developers? Very good question. And and honestly, uh, a lot of people would say yes to that. I think we are not there yet, right? Uh, I, I don't know if we'll ever be there, uh, at least not in you know in our lifetime. Things are uh, these LLMs are great for a lot of things. The large language models are very powerful, but I don't think they are there yet. Uh, the point is, a developer, junior or not, does not only write code. Right? There's a lot of other things that we have to do. Right? We have to to understand the the, the business, understand the 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 whole dynamics of the solution we are building. We have to be able to, to okay, I, I, I can't even count how many times a junior person on the team was the one that came up with the, the specific idea for a, a problem because everybody else was just so, so much focused, had so much focus on something else that we didn't see that small uh, problem that would really become a big bug if we let it grow. Right, so it's it's the the value that people bring to the table is much more than just coding, right? And that's the message right. that we also have to pass to everybody, right? Especially for people that's hiding, it's important that they understand this. We need people still, and for a long time. Yeah, I'm I'm actually going to argue that uh, you know, uh, uh, in terms of what developers do. The biggest work that we do is solve problems, right? It's not actually writing the code, right? You know, so we have to really 
understand things. And there's one more thing that I would like to, to point out in terms of this, because for me, um, AI is this, uh, this great tool to help junior developers to grow even faster, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, we know that it takes from three to five years for you to build the, uh, the, the brain of a developer, right? That's why it takes, you know, several years for you to, you know, for, for you to, to really get the experience that you need uh, to be a very good developer. And so, and one of the reasons why I take this time is because, you know, for us to grow really fast, we need a fast feedback loop, right? And so today, uh, the fast feedback loop that we have is that I write code and then, you know, then Silvio might come and review my code and take a look at it and give me some suggestions on how to improve it. And so I learn how to do that. You know, I, I, one of the, the, the most amazing teachers of good code writing is Venkat Subramanian, right? And, the, and his process is amazing because, you know, he, uh, uh, when, when his students write code, right? Venkat doesn't tell them, oh, yes, this is wrong, this is right, right? Venkat, say, Venkat writes tests that fail because what the student did was, was not very good, right? And so, uh, so then the student has to figure out how to pass the test that Venkat created and then how to really uh, improve that, right? And so, so they learn coding by having this this feedback loop with Venkat. Can you imagine how amazing you'd be if you can have like a feedback loop with Venkat, right? That's great, right? Now, the problem with that, that's, you know, it's very rare for you to be able to work with Venkat, right? And if I send my code to Silvio, Silvio is doing his own job, right? So he's not gonna be very happy. Like he wants to do his thing, instead of looking at my code and fix this. So we devote a small amount of time on code review. No, it's not the largest thing that we do now, but if you have an AI that you can, that can review your code, can suggest you changes, or can even, you know, create tests that would show that your, case, your, your code is bad, for example, then you can do that cycle much, much faster, right? You don't, you know, you don't need to be, uh, um, and, and AI does not not going to judge you also, right? So, you know, a lot, of, I, I see a lot of developers that they're afraid, especially junior developers, they're afraid to share the code. So they don't want to do open source, for example, because they're afraid of sharing a bad code, right? And so, you know, if, if the AI can help you with that, that's a way for you to be much, much faster, right? So for example, going back to the, to the example that's on the screen of the sales page, right? You know, I, you, you can get, you can send the sales page to the AI. You can discuss things. You can you can change things. You can test things out much faster than if you have to go out in the world and test with other people and talk with other people. So I think that, that that AI can help us reduce the cycle that we have. Definitely. All right. So so you know I think we're going to show some things here, right, Silvio? But yeah, uh, uh, you know, Absolutely. but but before. We you know, guys, I don't see anyone talking with me in the chat, right? I'm kind of, I'm kind of lonely here. I'm just talking to Silvio and Silvio's a good friend. I can talk with him many times, right? But, you know, but you guys here, right? So come on, don't, don't leave us, us, us lonely here. Tell us, what is your biggest problem that you're going on right now in your career? What's your biggest dream? When you're talking to all those kind of things, right? You know, be more productive and, and growing, uh, you know, growing faster and you kind of using AI. Are you okay with that, right? Do you do you see this as a problem? Do you see this as a good thing? Uh, you know, do, do you think that AI is going to help you achieve what your biggest dream is? So, what is your biggest dream? Because you can't just come to, come to ChatGPT and say, "Hey, ChatGPT, I want to be a speaker. What do I do? Or I want to double my salary. What do I do?" You can't just come to ChatGPT and do and do that. But you can come to us, and we're going to help you out, right? So, tell tell us on the chat, guys, uh, what's going on. Now, uh, uh, why, why do I type in there in the chat too? Because I know it takes a little bit for people to go and type in the chat. Um, you said, you mentioned here about writing tests that you think is the biggest, right. you know, your argument is that writing tests is the biggest thing that AI can do for you right now. And, and I think that's an interesting point too, because when I think the biggest problem that we see on testing today is not that the developers are not writing tests or, not, or, or something like this is that developers believe that writing tasks is slow them down, right? And mm -hmm. and the argument for that, I pose for that is that, you know, 
many, many developers come to me and say, oh, Bruno, in my company, they're not willing to devote the, the time needed and the money needed to write tests, right? So, so then we don't write tests. And then I think, I think to myself, you know, if I'm a manager and the developer comes to me and say, boss, we need more money and we need more time so we can to write tests. And I think, okay, so if we don't write tests, does that mean we're going to deliver our software cheaper and faster? So let's not write tests, right? But, but the reality is that it's impossible to deliver software faster and cheaper by not writing tests. Actually, tests should be a way for us to, re to reduce the time and the cost of writing software, right? So I think developers have the wrong mindset in terms of tests, right? So if AI can help developers put themselves the mindset that they don't need to spend more money, they don't need to spend more time to write tests, then I think that would be a big plus. So what do you think about that? I totally agree. Totally agree, especially in the case of, you know, the point of view of the, of the developer. I'm not even talk about the point of view of the manager because that's very accurate. But from the point of view of the developer, right? Uh, many of us, we don't like to write tests because first of all, it's not exciting, right? It's not the, 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 the core problem that we have to fix. Uh, and also it's kind of boring because you, you are just checking this and asserting that and validating this uh, value against that value, which is not really uh, uh, challenging, right? But it's long, it's repetitive. It's sometimes uh, uh, complicated, right? Especially if the, the, the thing that you are testing is complex. And talking about complex, let, let's let's imagine something here. I want to use a, an example of a, a, a type of API that is uh, very common in US for healthcare, right? It's, a, it's an important uh, uh, market, right? It's uh, there's billions and billions of dollars every year spent on healthcare. And one thing that they have in that market is the age of seven. It's a specification, if you are familiar with that, uh, that, uh, that type of a, a work, you may know it. And this is a very common API. Uh, it's used in many, uh, many places called the, the FIRE, the Happy FIRE API, right? This, this is a real API. This is, some, this is a sample uh, with fake data, but it's, it's used in many, many uh, big corporations here. And, and this is just a simple search for a patient data. And this is what you get, a big, uh, this one has what maybe a few hundred couple of thousand lines of uh, json here so this is complex let's say you have to to uh, maintain this and you don't have any tests for this uh, this api specifically or this the search by by patient here uh, and you want to to validate some some things right you know that i don't know uh, there must be a type, there must be a, a, an ID, there must be a last update and all that uh, specific stuff that this JSON must obey. And you have to create a test for that, right? And you, you start writing code and, and interpreting JSON and you don't even have a JSON representation of this yet. What do you do, right? What, how, how AI can help you? Like so, so let's take a look. Let's see what could be do. Let's let's write a test for this. That is validate some stuff here, right? Let's say the result, uh, the resource type, the totals, uh, things that we know. Like okay, this this get page parameter here has an ID. This ID must match this ID. This is a rule that by chance I know that has to be like that. Uh, let's see how how easy it would be to write this with the help of uh, uh, AI. I will use ChatGPT here, but it could be any of those, uh, you know, uh, compiled acts uh, that just this week went out of uh, went, went, uh, general availability. I've been using it for three months now, but it was right now it's available to everyone if you want. It's a, it's a very powerful, uh, it's like ChatGPT, but on the IDE. Uh, but let's let's keep ChatGPT because it's a, it's a known interface. Everybody knows that. So. I have this, right? I have this thing here. Let me get uh, the raw JSON because it's easy to copy and paste. I just copy this thing. I go to my ID here. I'm using Go 
could be anything. Uh, let me create a new file here. Uh, B. Number two. And we'll just paste the thing here. People ask me, okay, do you, I see this is a JSON. Do you want to create a structure out of it? Yeah, sure do. Okay, good. Let's call it. And true because I have bundle already here on this project. I don't want to create any test. And, and that's, this is it. Look at how fast it was to just get a, a, a JSON a structure out of that raw JSON. This is actually something that uh, IntelliJ does for you uh, automatically. And I'm using Go here, not Java, so uh, the, the language was already pre predefined. Okay, fine, I have this. Mm -hmm. uh, but what else? What else can I do? How do I write the, the, the request, right, the prompt? Let me go here to another place. And I, I wrote this, you know, beforehand, so it doesn't waste time typing here. So you start telling the, the AI what to do and how to behave. And this is, this is the skill that we have to create, right? The skill of expressing ourselves well and creating context and being able to ask the right things for the, the for, from the AI, right? So you go here. Uh, you want a professional software developer working in Go. So why this, is this sentence important? To create this, the, to set the parameters for the AI, what, how the AI is supposed to start answering your questions, right? So you, you start by telling what uh, or how it should behave. It should behave as a professional software developer writing, working in Go, you know? I then you say, write a test function uh, to make a call to a URL to validate the response. This is very generic, right? Oh, it's a, some URL, some response, but how? Well, oh, making this, these validations. The response must be a JSON, the response must be a valid bundle, bundle ID, must have a last update, must be, must be of this type search. Uh, the now things start to be funny bit more complex, right? There is something called the link. In the link, there is a relation. The relation means there is a value of self. Make sure it does exist. If it does exist, it must be a call to itself. Okay, now we are getting, you know, complicated business rules uh, within the, the data structure, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Then you say, okay, uh, validate that any link, any link relation that is not self must be you know, must have a, a, a get pages that is equal to the bundle of fields. So now you are, you are making relationships between things within that data structure. You, know, you, are, you are exploring the data and telling, okay, AI, look at this and, and create those things for me. And, and you are telling how the tests should be created. This must be equal to that and whatnot. So you, at this stage, you are telling all the rules that must be enforced and must be tested, right? Then you go even further and say, okay, you know what, let's do this. Let's follow all the links until the end and make sure that uh, all the arrays of entry, what's that? Let's, let's go back to this structure here. Let me go back to the other one, it's easier to see. Look at this, there is an entry here and that's the core of my data, right? It's hundreds, well, in this case, only 20, 20 per page, 20, entries, okay, right, so 20 in a page, 624,000 total, there will be many, many pages, right, there is a max here, so it's a standard pagination, but I want to make sure that, you know, if I follow the pagination, I do receive 624,287 back, that's a valid test, right, that my total is right, and that all my pages are, uh, you know, returning that uh, total value if I go until the end. Oh, they do tell it. Okay, follow the next links until there are no more next links. In the end, validate that the total of entries is equal to the total in the first page, right? Uh, in the first bundle. So you, you you express yourself in English, being very clear, very logical. There's very little ambiguity. At least I I try to be, not be very ambiguous here. And then you say, okay and use the following struct as a definition to define a bundle, right? And then we just paste the thing that we had before, right? 
So you take this. So 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 the first thing that we have to see right there, right? There is yes, you know, you're gonna you're gonna use AI to help you generate lots of code for you because there's a lot of code to do all the things that you said there, but you know exactly what you want, right? Correct. And and funny enough, if you get if you you know most developers that we're going to work with for junior developer, for example, uh, don't even tell this to the junior, right? And, <laughs> and so right. If, if, you're, if, you, if you said that to a junior, he would be able to, to go and, you know, maybe kind of uh, try to fi figure out things out, but, but he would have a much better chance to actually do the right thing. But most people just say, write a test for this, right? And then, mm -hmm. and so... Uh, so, so you, what are you showing here is that you're going to work with someone, uh, no, you're going to work for an, with an AI, but you, you're going very precise. You know exactly what you're doing. You know exactly your results that you want. Correct. So, that's that's a, a very good point that you just made because uh, when we talk earlier about the junior developers, you know, and, and the relationship of the junior developer with the senior staff, uh, uh, I have I didn't realize that until you said, but we're a little bit unfair if the junior developer because we don't tell to that level of detail what we want, right? And and if the AI we have to, so that, that's a good point. I right? have to think about the cost, the, the implications of that, but that's a very good point. So um, let's see what uh, what GPT will do with all this stuff, right? Um, get an empty GPT. I'm using GPT four. And I just paste all this here. And it will start generating code for me, right? Uh, code that is um, uh, strictly correct, that does exactly what I need, because those things are super simple, right? There's no complex algorithm here. It's, uh, it's going through a, a, a bunch of... Uh, uh, not a bunch, sorry, uh, a complex data structure and and yeah, can, a can certain you, stuff that little, I wanted to do. Yeah, can you zoom in mm -hmm. a little bit more so you can see a little bit better? Yeah, good. Okay, cool. Thanks. So it's now creating this code for us real time, right? It's fast. Mm -hmm. Most probably right. We'll, we'll definitely take a look to see what uh, what it's doing here, right? Uh, creating a main that so it's done, and uh, it comes up with a nice explanation about this stuff that is there, the ideas that was that it you know actions that it took and things like that. Uh, but let's take a look at the code. Right? See if it's actually something that's useful. So, okay, this is the structure. You just copy the structure that we had. Actually, no, look at this, right? Look at what it actually did. Uh, the bundle structure was much more complicated, but it simplified it, right? It only added attributes that it actually needed. Remember, I don't know if you can, uh, if you take a look at this, right? The entry is complex. There's, types and types within types and the text and, and whatnot, right? But those are unimportant to the test itself. So you just ignore it. You know, you made a, the, the AI made a decision to, okay, I, don't, I only need this full URL here and this resource. Everything else is unimportant. But with JSON, right, if you don't read something, it's still there. It doesn't go away. So it's, a, it's an interesting decision. The AI was able to make that decision and you, as a, as a senior developer has have to understand, not senior developer, as a developer that's guiding this, must be able to understand this. Okay, this is not wrong. This is this is something that is valid in this this particular context. Right? So it's, again, it's your decision to to make sure that the the, the, the the options that the AI is taking is making are are valid. Right? That could be a mistake. In this case, it is. If it was XML, it would be, it would be a mistake. Now, uh, total entry zero, okay, some, sounds reasonable. First total is zero, uh, next URL with initial URL. Okay, that's, that's fine. Uh, then it becomes a big four here. All right, if it's testing for next URL, probably then it will change next URL somewhere. Maybe, 
you know, validation here, validation there, see if it's a bundle, if it's the ID is there, validate that the type is correct. Uh, then we start to look at every link. There must be a self. If it is a self, it must be the, the right type, right? Uh, and, and so and so. It's okay, fine. It's, it's doing the test I want. Okay, get pages. If the pages is there, it must equal the ID. All right, okay. It, it did the, the validation. And, and at the end, this, this calculating is adding the total entries, going to the next. So it's doing the pagination here. And in the end, if the total entries is not the first total, we have an error as well. Cool. So it did everything I asked it to do, right? And, and by the way, I know it does work because uh, I have this test right here that is that test, right? A simplified version of that test. And this is a real URL over there. I can, I can even run this probably. It may take a while because that API is not the fastest in the world. Oh, actually it was fast. So it must be on the, on the cache of the server over there. And, and it passes, you get the green test, right? So it's a valid test. And I was able to get this test super, you know, super fast in, in, in minutes, right? You spend more time thinking about the problem, which is what we're supposed to do, solve the problem. In this case, design a very good and consistent test. And, and uh, uh, the AI will build it for you. Okay, so instead of having to, to, to spend maybe uh, 45 minutes to an hour to write a test like this, because especially in, in, if you are not familiar with the language, but even if you are, it will take a, some time. It's, it's there. It's, it's, it's a great solution. It's fast in this case. Uh, but also, as Bruno was saying, is a very good way to, to get fast feedback on, on your ideas, right? Maybe the, the thing that you ask is not logical and the code will be weird. You will be able to see, okay, this, this is trying to do things that don't make sense because I was asking things that didn't make sense, right? Also, as another thing that I like a lot is that uh, uh, it's a very good uh, teaching platform as well, right? So let's say I, I have this in Go and I want to see how, how, how does this look in Java? Right? And, well, show me this text in Java using JUnit 5. And we'll come up with a JUnit 5 version of this. Okay, so that is the piece that helps a lot as well because now you can start, if you don't know Java, you are a Go developer, you need to, to, to do some testing in a Java uh, application. You can use this as a learning tool, not only translation, but also you will start to, to understand uh, the, 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 the different ways things happen, like, okay, it's using, you know, the generics for Java and whatnot. So it's, it's a very good tool to learn a new skill as well, right? Um, well, Silvio, we're, we're almost out of time here, right? So, oh, okay. yeah, so, yeah, so, so, so I just, I just want to go over a couple of things here. Uh, first of all, uh, jury said something here that I thought was interesting. He said that knowledge management should be something that should be solved with AI, right? For example, uh, you could ask something like, is, why is service X implementing feature I, Y? And then the AI would, would could answer something like, say, oh, that was discussed on the 5th of June uh, in, in Team Purple, right? Here's a guess of it, right? So actually kind of have AI to, to sort through all the meetings, all the discussions, and you know all the chats, right, or all the recorded uh, inch, uh, uh, meetings, um, and and I think that's that's what AI does very well, right? So you know it's a great search engine, right? Uh, Understanding what yes, was said, what was yes. do, do you see that? There, there is a detail to that. There is a detail to that, right? The technology that we have today, um, as of right now, right? Uh, the, the things that. Mm -hmm. ChatGPT and, and everything else, those big uh, large language models, the way they are built, they don't learn as 
as they are used, right? They, they improve just a little bit, but they don't have memory. They, they, they don't acquire new knowledge, right? Uh, I don't know if you remember that just a few months ago, uh, there will be this message saying, uh, everything I know is up to, I think it was July 2021. Now it moved mm -hmm. to, to June 2022 or something like that. But uh, uh, the point is, the, the LLMs that we have today, the, the AI that we have today, they have to 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 have today, when they are trained and when, when they are used, right? So mm -hmm. uh, if, if the AI was trained with all that data, with all that uh, uh, those, those minutes for those uh, meetings and whatnot, yes, it will be able to say, okay, we decided to do that at that moment. But uh, if that's not the case, if you don't have that meeting on the training moment, right, the, maybe the, the training was six months ago and the meeting was two months ago, the AI will not be aware of it. So it doesn't really, uh, unless we, we train it over and over again, uh, we, we just don't have that, right? There, there, there are people trying to make this happen. There are interesting uh, research being, being done in, in how to, to align those things. But uh, the results that we have today is, is uh, the data that was used at training is the results are much better than the data that is added later on after training for, to, due to some, some you know, scheme or whatever. So we don't have that yet. So, uh, if, if a meeting happened after training moment, uh, probably not. They will, they will say, right. I don't know. And the worst thing is that the AI will probably hallucinate and we come up with a reason that didn't exist. This is just a lie. And, yeah. and, and that's another thing that happens well, a lot. Which is, again, will be a problem, right? Because if you, once you start believing that the responses that you are receiving are not hallucinations or basing your decisions in the specific company's context, right? Based on what mm -hmm. A have been told, right? Um, saying, hey, it ha has never been discussed, right? But it was in reality that might be the wrong course of action. But yeah, as an area, it does look uh, promising. So, guys, uh, sorry, I have to yes. interrupt. This is a very lively discussion, but we are running out of time. And uh, uh, thank you yes. very much. Um, you have shared your uh, social media handles so uh, our um, viewers can reach out to you for the follow-up conversation. Thank you very much for demo. Uh, this was a very nice one, actually. I think this end-to-end -end test described in the natural language is a very interesting um, area of research for the AI and area that we're automating, definitely. Um, so thank you very much sure. for... Yep. Yeah, so Yuri, just, I just put on the chat, guys, you know, if you also follow me on social media, you're going to see as the first link on my Twitter account. I just put there because I wrote a, a little book to help you plan about your career. And so because, you know, if you don't plan your career, if you don't know where you want to go, AI is not going to be able to help you, right? So AI is going to actually going to play against you if you don't know where you want to go. So this whole thing that she was talking about, that the AI, AI can hallucinate, right? But if you know where you want to go, that can that you you can make the ai work for you right so that's what i put a book there in the chat so if anyone want to take a look just click there and i'll thanks so much yuri for for for, for having us here uh thanks olag uh that's a good friend of mine that invited me here thanks a lot it's a good opportunity yes, thank you and Absolutely. hope to see you again